Does the NTF LCAP or the national government require that a barangay declare CPP NPA as persona non grata for them to be included in the BDP, for them to be able to receive the benefits of BDP? No, uh, not at all. The uh, declaration of uh, persona non grata is uh, voluntary on their side and by resolution of their uh, of their councils. Uh, for municipalities, it's by the uh, Sangguniang Bayan. And for the barangays, is the Sangguniang uh, Barangay. Uh, so far, uh, 85% of LGUs, meaning the municipalities, uh, have declared the CPP NPA as uh, persona non grata. We have uh, 100% uh, in uh, Region 1. Uh, Central Luzon, and uh, four others. It's quite high. It's quite quite high. And then so sir, it's not it's not a requirement uh, for them to declare uh, the the uh, the uh, CPP and PA as persona non grata. But uh, when we work out the barangays through the Retool uh, Community Support Program, that means involving the EFP, PNP, and the LGU, the resolution uh, comes uh, out of that, out of the process. It's mm -hmm. not forced on them. Uh, it's not forced on them, meaning it becomes their voluntary uh, gesture. Okay. And then, sir, will the 2,200 barangays that you said were cleared of leftist influence um, will they, how much will they receive? Because sir, the yung, yung price supposedly for under your BDP program is if they're cleared of communist influence, they will receive 20 million worth of projects. So uh, with this new 2,200 barangays, will they receive the same amount or different? And will this come from the 2022 budget? Uh, we have not committed anything yet, but uh, that, will, that will be our direction. If we do not uh, develop these areas, then it becomes a vicious cycle, as has happened in the past. Uh, you operate there uh, for four, three months, four months, five months. If you leave the area without uh, developing the area, then uh, these areas become susceptible to the recovery uh, or the re-influencing of the uh, armed groups, the New People's Army. So. To solve this once and for all, uh, or to have a better, better chances of uh, eradicating insurgency in that area, we have to develop the areas. Uh, after all, these barangays are uh, geographically isolated or disadvantaged. They have left. They have been left to their own uh, for so many years. Uh, by past uh, governments, and uh, maybe you could even say uh, the present government. Uh, that's why we are doing this uh, now. Uh, if you, we don't develop them, then uh, uh, the efforts of your security forces and now of the local government units and the, and the government agencies would go to note. Uh, and go again to the vicious cycle and uh, it becomes uh, an issue that would even uh, encourage perhaps uh, recruitment from these barangays. Mm. Follow up, sir. Does clear the leftist influence in barangays mean include, for example, mga political parties na progressive and uh, they want to run, for example, in the 2022 elections? Um, this, if a barangay has this these uh, organizations will you do they qualify as uh, not yet cleared of leftist influence po ba? No, po ba uh, we don't go into that we don't go into that we simply we simply look into the organs of political power that the cppnp have in the areas the organs of uh, political power we mean the organizations that they have uh, put up for the youth for the women for the farmers, for fisher folks, and other sectors. If indeed there are political uh, groups there that uh, have taken advantage of this or are affiliated with the uh, CPP and PA, then uh, we expect 
that they will no longer support this, uh, these political organizations. But whoever they are, our uh, interest would be in dismantling the organs of political power because these organs of political power make the barangays, uh, in effect, shadow governments. Shadow governments. And if there are shadow governments or if they are in control of the CPP and PA, then they are most likely to vote for organizations that are affiliated with them. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. 